This shirt is an analogy for Windows. You could think of the Empire as Microsoft, uh, and you can think of Darth Vader as Mr. Gil Bates, and then the Stormtroopers represent all of the Windows users. In late 2021, I switched to Linux for a few reasons. Valve's Proton support allowed for most games to be played on Linux. LTT did their 30-day Linux challenge, and I never got off of it. Windows is getting more bloated and invasive. And finally, open source software is a very beautiful idea that we should all embrace. I've been on Linux for about three years, and just like anyone else who's tried Linux, I've distro hopped quite a bit. I started on Pop OS, and then I realized I didn't like GNOME. So then I switched to KDE Neon, and then Manjaro KDE, uh, which happens to be my favorite. KDE as a desktop environment is really good and very familiar for Windows users. Uh, also, Mint is really good. I've also tried Garuda and most recently Novara, and that's the one I'm on right now. And frankly, I'm bored. Uh, but more than that, when things don't just work, I'm really annoyed. GIMP likes to crash when I change the color of text. Discord doesn't let me share my screen, but when it does, there's no audio. Core Control, a software I use to undervote my GPU, doesn't have the same functionality across all distros, and there isn't really a clear reason why. I mean, I download the same package and it just has more or less functionality. Some software just doesn't work depending on my distro. DaVinci Resolve won't launch. So I'm still on Caden Live for video editing, but during a bigger project, it gets really slow. Counter-Strike has really random performance issues that change over time. Currently, anytime there's an AK firing, my I just start skipping. And while I've gotten used to typically free and open source alternatives for my software, it's sad I don't have things I'm used to, like hardware monitor or a crystal disk, and I never figured out why. It works or it doesn't, I don't know. But one positive thing I can say is that I can screen cap Counter-Strike through OBS without needing to go untrusted in the launch options. That's an advantage over Windows, I guess. Now there is some software that I like a lot more than the closed source alternatives that Windows users may be used to. For Corsair devices, you may be familiar with IQ, which needs to run in the background and just feels very unnecessary. However, OpenRGB, while not incredibly intuitive, is very functional for all your RGB enabled devices. And while I do love Linux, I have gotten used to it over the last few years, I miss the simplicity of Windows. I don't miss the idea of being spied on 100% of the time, but I miss things just working. I have yet to try Windows 11, I don't really see the point, and Windows 10 still has support until October 2025, so I will be spending Windows 10's last year with it until I get bored or frustrated again. So I'm going to show you what I've gotten used to around Linux, the software I've used, and a little last look through before I get off Linux. Maybe forever, who knows? So this is Core Control. Here's my system. I've got a Ryzen 7 5700, a non-X, so it's like a 5700G without the G, blah, blah, and a Radeon RX 5700 XT. But I have this profile that I've set, and I'll do undervolting in the next video, but I'm gonna need Radeon software for that. But again, not all versions of core control like are able to do all of this. Sometimes it's just the power limit that I can set. Dolphin file manager. Uh, it's cool and stuff. You see this video that's currently being recorded in the background. Uh, I, I won't miss the Linux file system. I'm still not really used to like what all these folders are. Like, yeah, home. Oh, that doesn't even go anywhere. Oh, thanks, man. But like, I don't know what the heck most of this is still. We've got Brave for the web browser. You can even use this on Windows. It's my favorite. And it'll show you when there's updates down here in the bottom. And it's not gonna update out of the nowhere like Windows likes to do. Keypass XC for a password manager. I've been using a password manager for a few years now. It's really handy. It can generate passwords for you and you use one master password to sign into it and you can sort and organize all your old passwords and you can even bring in like your saved passwords from your web browser and it'll import them and you can change them from there and keep your password safe. I recommend everybody use a password manager. Might as well try this one. Uh, only Office, I, I like it. Again, less invasive than like a Microsoft Office, but then again, it has way less functionality than a Microsoft Office. But again, things like DaVinci Resolve uh, just failed to launch. Watch this, uh, DaVinci Resolve. It'll do its thing for a minute and then nothing. Flame Shot's a good way to take screenshots, though I found that you can also just hit print screen and kind of select from there what to do. Raw Therapy, there's also Darktable for editing raw photos. 
Uh, I find them a little confusing, but nah, I don't need to use them too much with them to export it as non-raw. Linux has the advantages of like using less RAM than Windows by default, not being owned by a big company. That's a big one. Being able to customize it and make it your own, but I feel like it's just missing a little something, you know? But I really want Windows to have like a lighter version, something that's just the operating system. All right, either way, uh, that's the end of this show off. I'm gonna move back to Windows and, and show you how I get set up on there. In Cam's defense, things not just working is not his fault. But you know what? It's not the fault of Linux either. Now Cameron's allergy to the Linux terminal aside, as both him and I these days focus on media creation, I completely understand as someone who does a lot of video creation that making the decision to go with Linux can cause problems. The reason is because with a GNU Linux operating system, you add many variables in addition to different hardware configurations that wouldn't be there on Windows. Like for example, different distros. Now for someone who wants to fine tune and customize their desktop experience all the time, all this choice is great, but it comes with the cost of both stability and reliability, especially for stinky casuals like Cameron, who, like I said before, doesn't like using the terminal. Now, before you crucify him for not wanting to use the terminal and compile code, etc., let's think about this for a second. The type of experience Cameron is looking for is, it just works. But I don't think it's right to just tell him, well, what do you expect? Linux is built to be used with a terminal. Personally, to me, this idea is really insulting to Linux and the people who have worked hard over the years trying to create and honestly, a very decent desktop experience that we have today. There are Linux experiences that are designed to function completely without the terminal. Just look at Chrome OS or Android. It's just unfortunate that when it comes to content creation tasks for us artsy types, the more locked down the platform is, the better our software works. I mean, just ask as many video editors as you want, they'll tell you that the best NLE experience is on Mac because their software doesn't crash every 15 minutes. Partially because there's only one software configuration and only a handful of hardware configurations. Now, I will agree that maybe Cam should have investigated using the terminal or community scripts to try to fix some of his issues. I mean, it's not fair to ask a dev who probably doesn't get paid to do it to compile their software for you. But a lot of the times, the issue Cameron sees is lack of support from the larger hardware and software companies, as they just don't care about offering a usable Linux experience for many of their products. <coughs> Elgato and Canon. I'd speak more on this, but I'm gonna have to save it for the Linux rant video I have coming soon, exclusive to members. Be sure to join up to see it. I'd like to speak more on this, but I'm gonna have to save it for the upcoming Linux rant video, exclusive to members. Make sure to join up if you're interested in seeing it. Anyways, back to Cameron's Linux sob story. On a fresh Windows install, the only thing I did was install OBS for the screen cap. Let's begin. I start by clearing up my taskbar of things I don't use, then deleting all the junk that comes pre-installed but sometimes after updating, this stuff does come back. Another note is that when installing Windows, I make sure that my ethernet cable isn't plugged in, so I say I don't have internet and won't need to sign into a Microsoft account. I use Edge once to download a better web browser. Then I gotta install drivers for my hardware, like motherboard and graphics card. On Linux, you don't need to do this because one, the companies don't have software for Linux, and two, all of the drivers are built into the kernel, so you don't need to anyway. We've got our seldom Windows personalization features such as dark mode and colors. Then I became incredibly annoyed with being spammed with Windows sounds, so I went through and set less sharp and annoying sounds for everything. Then I used something called ONO Shut Up Windows 10, which lets me disable a bunch of Microsoft telemetry stuff. Just be a little careful with the settings you set with this, it can break functionality. You'll wonder why your mates can't hear you on Discord when you've disabled app access to microphone. Then I go through and install my other favorite software like Steam, Discord, KeyPass XC, GIMP, OnlyOffice, Prism Launcher, Library Hardware Monitor, Crystal Disk, CPU-Z, and GPU-Z. Something I didn't expect to change about me is while using Linux, I've stopped putting things on the desktop. That's a place for Windows to sit. Instead, I've started using the Start menu to keep my applications and all of my files, well, and my files, much cleaner this way. All right, now let's see how future me thinks of Windows so far. I've been on Windows for a couple weeks now, getting back in the groove, and here's some of my thoughts so far. I've gotten used to the Dolphin File Manager, being able to click the little plus next to icons to select multiple, rather than needing to hold control, and as well as the little split button on the top right to open up another window side by side, that's a handy little feature that we don't have in Windows. 
Another small nitpick, uh, when you're signing into your computer, at least on KDE, you can just start typing in your password and it'll begin to fill in. On Windows, you need to have an initial press or click to get past that little first screen to then start typing in your password. Not a big deal, but I don't know, a little quality of life thing. On KDE, I could use a scroll wheel on the mouse to cycle through web browser tabs as well as tabs in the taskbar. But on Windows, I don't seem to have that functionality. I don't know. A small difference to connect to my home server, a video on that coming eventually, get subscribed. On Linux, I used NFS shares by copying and pasting a command. On Windows, I had to figure out Samba shares, which wasn't too awfully difficult. It was just a new way for me to access my NAS. However, I appreciate Vulcan shaders not taking forever to launch my games, and I can guarantee that they'll launch and perform well without too many bugs. One quirk I had last time I was on Windows, and that's still present, if I full screen a video in YouTube or Patreon, there's a good chance that it'll freeze and then eventually come back with my screen now flickering horizontally and I'll have to restart my computer to fix this. I don't know what the problem is, something to do with either my graphics card or Radeon drivers or both. I still have to install DaVinci Resolve to replace Caden Live for my video editing. Uh, Caden Live's familiar to me, it's kind of like Sony Vegas, which I was using for years. But according to Ando, DaVinci is the best. Now don't ridicule me, Linux community. I still love Linux and will use it eventually again and on laptops and other systems. But for my main gaming and production rig, I need to be both micro and soft. And don't rejoice, Windows diehards. I hate this operating system. I'm just waiting patiently for the year of the Linux desktop. Ah, uh, who am I kidding?